true shading mode. True shading mode is a mode in NX that displays views with true shading visualization characteristics. This mode offers many of the same capabilities as advanced studio mode, but not all of them. True shading mode is a more user-friendly mode giving the user the ability to display the effects of materials, textures, lighting, shadows, and reflections to a moderate degree. In this tutorial, we will be rendering a previously modeled and assembled sniper rifle. Right-click on your ribbons bar and activate render mode and enter into it. Now enter into true shading mode. As you can see, a grid has been placed with four reflections and shadows that all can be easily changed at the click of a button. You have different options for several types of backgrounds. You're able to choose if you would like face edges with hidden lines to show or not. You are able to choose between five preset scene lightings or even go to basic lights and do a custom setup between four lights and a ambient scene brightness that can be altered between lighter or darker. You are also given a global materials tab that gives you several different options for assigning a global material onto all of the components. such as yellow glossy plastic or clear glass blue or green gloss plastic and we will use black metallic paint. Proceeding to the True Shade Editor, you're given options where you're able to assign different uh, specified materials onto faces of the top assembly. You're also able to manipulate the background as we were just doing and the image file connected to that background. You are able to manipulate the offset of the floor and plane. You are able to make the shadow to the back wall or whichever wall you, you would desire. For example, we will put a red metallic paint on a couple of these faces. then choose our red metallic paint and it will apply like so. Now for instance if you wanted to place specific material colors on a component that has a lot of faces like this part then you would be able to also exit out of the true shading editor. You would double click on the component to enter into it and highlight it and enter into Object Materials. 
you are given a small selection of object materials you are also able to assign, including the red metallic paint. Now you don't have to select every single face on that component. We will do the same to this one. And this one. And this one. Now that our object materials are assigned, if we were to change the global material to gold, the metallic red paint stays accordingly. Proceeding into preferences, we are given several different settings we are able to change in preferences. Starting in special effects, you are given an ability to create a foggy render on your component and change the settings. In view screen, you can change the rotatable views, fit, and rotation point delay settings. Handle set ID colors to part settings. Emphasis allows different blend colors and percentages for wireframe objects and color sets for shaded geometry while also edge colors. Visual changes the rotatable view settings further by specifying different render styles, edge colors, and hidden edge styles, as well as lighting and translucency, edge emphasis, and edge display settings. Faceting allows the display of facet edges, which are types of wireframe, and gives different settings to alter them. Color and font gives you the ability to change the colors of the geometry and drawing part settings. Names and borders show objects' names in the 3D environment, but it can get messy if the assembly is complex. And line gives settings to change the curve's tolerance, 
and line widths. Viewing edit object display, we are able to select an object and change the parts translucency in the assembly and assign different color displays for several types of displays and analysis. This can be very helpful if you had complex components and you wanted to show them in this view. And these are the different types of analysis color displays. You are able to set between surface, section, curve analysis, surface intersection, deviation gauge, highlight line. From here, after you've completed your render and you're satisfied with the results, you are able to come to export and you're given four options to export it as a PNG, JPEG, GIF, or a TIFF. We will export a JPEG. You are given an option to use a white background or the background that's been assigned by you already. Save it like so. If you do not want the WCS within your export, you're also able to change that within the preferences view in the screen tab, where you are able to hide the triad CSYS. That concludes our render tutorial of true shading.